happening, a New York Times bestselling author who says, once you tell a story, you are not forgotten. She wrote the well-known books Practical Magic and The Dove Keepers. She's here today to tell us about her new novel, The World That We Knew. Please welcome Alice Hoffman to The Morning Blend. It's so nice to have you here. Thank you. Thank you for Great having to see me here. You. And you had an Oprah's book club pick, too. I did. Yeah, which, which one, one was that? that? That was here, was here on Earth. Earth. Yeah, it was kind of a retelling of Wuthering Heights. Yeah, okay. Yeah, what did she like about that book? You know, who knows what she <laughs> oh, she, didn't say. she doesn't tell you. You know, she doesn't tell you. I think what, what she likes is to, I always feel like she likes to introduce her audience to different writers yeah. and different kinds of writing. So that book was about, was about a woman who went back to her hometown and fell in love with her old boyfriend. So there were a lot of people okay. who could relate to that. Okay, here's what yeah. I want to know, is you're an author, like you, and you get the call or however it happens. Your publicist says, oh, by the way, I wanted to let you know that Oprah picked your book to be in yeah. her book club. And you do what? I said, no, that's not, that can't be true. I don't believe you. Did you no. think it was a prank call? Oh, I thought it was a, I thought, I totally thought it was a prank call. And then you did the happiness. Well, then I was so nervous because they said, don't tell anyone. So I didn't even tell my mother. You know, it's like, it's a secret. Don't tell anyone. So, but it was very exciting, and I think she's done so much for books. Yes, so absolutely. Much. I, I love And now love Reese that. Witherspoon Jenna, is copying her. And Jenna Bush is doing yes. all that as yep. well, which I love so much. So let's talk about this novel and the inspiration behind it, because I love this story, and also a, a woman who approached you as well. Yeah, I was, I was giving a reading, I think it was about 15 years ago, in mm -hmm. Palm Beach, and a woman was waiting for me, an older woman, very attractive, waiting for me outside of the library, and she said, I need you to write my life. And I said, you know, I don't really do that kind of thing. She said, no, no, I was a hidden child in France during World War II, oh. and I feel that everyone is forgetting. And if you don't write it, I'm going to be forgotten. She was hidden because she was Jewish. She was Jewish, and she was hidden in a convent by her parents so that she would survive, mm -hmm. and they did not. So um, I thought about it over the years. I, I just kept thinking about her, and I just feel like it was the time to really tell the story. It's not really her story because I don't know the facts, yeah. but I was so lucky. I, I went to meet a lot of Holocaust survivors. You went to France a bunch I of times, I went to France, right? yes. Yeah. yeah, I went to France and met Holocaust survivors there. They were child survivors, but they're now in their 80s and 90s. Mm -hmm. And the stories are going to get lost soon. Yeah. Wow. Were most of the people who you met, the children, were they hidden? Did they have to convert and, and be Catholic or other religions to survive? Some of them were. And then there were these group homes, these chateaus, where they put Jewish children and they had teachers. And most of them never saw their parents again. Mm. Uh, much has been made about your decision to use. Is it a golem? Yes. Golem. Golem. Is golem. It golem. Golem. It golem. Golem. We looked them up today. Yeah, we yes. saw a picture of them. Golems, yes, because we didn't know. Yeah, um, and the fact that you made this unusual choice to make make it female. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, tell us about that and the use of it in the story. Well, a golem was was kind of a traditional folklore um, thing that kind of like a gnome. Would you say or? But taller and meaner. <laughs> <laughs> like an army dude. Yes, yeah, right, yeah. like to protect the Jewish like a titan, people. Yeah. Right, and they yeah. could get out of control, you mm -hmm. know, and they were always male, and they were brought to life out of clay and water by like magicians and rabbis. But in my book, it, it's a mother who wants a golem for her daughter to travel with her daughter to leave yeah. Berlin and go to France, mm. and she wants a female golem. Yeah. Oh, okay. that's really cute. Yeah. Uh, it, tell us a little bit more about who, who would like this story. Who is this story for? I think it's really, you know, I think I really wrote it for myself, yeah. but I think it's for anybody. I wrote it because I felt like it was a dark time now, and I felt, you know, I needed hope and lightness and mm -hmm. belief in something. And for me, meeting these Holocaust survivors really gave me hope because I felt like they had gone through such a dark time, mm -hmm. and they were still alive and wanted to be alive and loved being alive. So it just was very hopeful for me. So I, I don't think there's any particular person, but I think it's for anybody who feels like they need that right now too. Mm -hmm. I find authors fascinating. And one of the things I always wonder about all you all <laughs> is yes. when you write, how often you write, and if you ever get writer's block. I know that's three questions in one, but go ahead. Well, you know, I tend to write in the morning before there's, there are emails and phone calls and people. And so I, I used to get up at 4.45 and write. Whoa. Now I, it's more like 5.45 or 6. <laughs> but, you know, I think the morning is the best time. Also, I think you're kind of freer and, and less, you know, yes. less editing yourself. So that's what I do. I write all the time. I mean, it's really just my life. Writer's block? 
writer's block, I didn't believe in it till I had it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I had it. I had it actually after 9-11 because huh. I felt like, what's the point of writing? I just, you know, yeah. eh. and then I went back and read my, my hero is really Ray Bradbury and he wrote a book called Fahrenheit 451, yeah. which was a, a lot great of kids book. kids have read it in kids. school. It's yep. most like 12 year olds yep. are made to read it and <laughs> yes. it's a great book and it's about a society where books are dangerous and they mm -hmm. burn books. And I kind of remembered how important it is to read and how important it is to write. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So many of the things you're talking about, I feel like, are still so, they're so relevant as things today, and to not be forgotten, as you kind of mentioned. So yeah. I know you already had your book signing, but I want to make sure that people know where to get your book at your website, right? Yes. So people can find it there. It's the world that we knew at AliceHoffman.com. That's where you can get a copy of this. Obviously, many of her other books as well, but this um, is your latest. Thanks so much for sharing it with us. Thank you. So Thank great. You so it's much. a pleasure to meet you. Come back anytime. Thank you. Do you want yeah. to? Love it. Okay. <laughs> Thank it. you. I Thank will. You.